having nearly lost my lovely AR drone too uh, into the channel in my first attempt, I'm here in this field which is still quite near a large body of water, but I'm with a whole lot more confidence. The first most important thing to do is switch to mission mode in the top left. Mission mode and flight mode both include maps, so they're easily confused. Both also need to load map tiles from a service like Google Maps. This requires an internet connection, and I had to stop and use my phone tethered, which took some time. Mercifully, dear viewer, I have spared you that. And as you can see, our drone is now represented by four red circles surrounded by a yellow circle. Making sure the Edit Waypoints button is selected at the bottom, it's now time to click inside the map to set the first waypoint. I then check this is a waypoint and make sure the altitude is set at something less than 500 meters. Five seems sensible. I then click to add another. Adjust it to 10 meters. Add another. And then another back towards me and slightly lower. Finally, just beyond that one, I set what will be my landing. I have to adjust it to land from the list of choices. Once that's all complete, it can be transmitted with the button to the bottom right to your drone. Click Set. Now, and trust me, this is vital, check that those are the right waypoints. This is done by switching to the onboard waypoints button and clicking refresh. Refresh asks the drone what the waypoints are. You'll note, you'll note that all the altitudes have been reduced to three, but the actual positions are fine. The reason the altitudes are reduced to three is because that's the current limit set in the uh, AR drone software. We're not actually going to worry too much about that right now. Three meters is more than adequate for this entirely flat field. Instead, let's have a quick check that everything's all right. Refreshing again from the screen, looking down the list, and then hit play. This should begin our flight. Hello. The drone quickly gets its orientation and then heads off to the first waypoint. Which, to be honest, took me a little bit by surprise. I hadn't realised it was in front of me, even though it obviously was from the map. It turns immediately to the next waypoint and carries on its journey. It's now heading away from me faster than I'd like, to be honest. Doing my best to look casual and relaxed about it, I start moving after the drone. It then makes a second turn, and I realise everything is working just fine. Now it's time to drift back towards the slightly unattended laptop sitting near the car park. I relax even more when I decide that siren in the background isn't the police arresting me for flying my drone near an airport. The flight progresses calmly and smoothly. When it reaches its waypoint, the drone makes its turn. Just as it does when you're flying manually, it does lose a little bit of altitude as it makes its turn. Definitely something to bear in mind when you're setting your waypoints. Now you can see it's making its way back towards me. 
Your humble narrator is popping in and out of the top left of the shot. The slightly smaller black blob is my bag on which my laptop is resting and from which this is being recorded. It definitely comes to rest a little short of the waypoint from the side it approaches. In fact, it seems to make all of its turns a little earlier than where we might see the waypoint as being, which is something worth remembering, especially if you're going to try and fly it through a narrow gap. Other than that, though, breathe a sigh of relief. The flight was a success. To fix the altitude limit, you need to log back into your drone using your phone and using the free flight app. In piloting mode, you can select the settings option and then increase the altitude limit from wherever you left it to the maximum and maybe increase some of the other settings as well. For convenience, I'm going to start creating a new flight plan by dragging the waypoints from the previous flight plan. This just saves a little bit of effort as we know these waypoints are already a sensible altitude. You can still add more waypoints. To adjust the altitude, click on the waypoint to highlight it and then set a new height. Here I'm going to fly up to 25 meters to get a better view of the area. I'm going to change waypoint 4 from being landing to being another waypoint by clicking on it and choosing waypoint from the menu. That add a new landing waypoint much nearer me, safe in the knowledge that it will probably land just a little bit short. While you're making these tweaks, it's important to remember that they're not actually on the drone. You're just making the tweaks in your flight plan. I can move point 4 in just a little bit further from the road just to make me feel safe. My theory is if there's a waypoint in the air quite near the landing point then the landing waypoint will be more accurate. I'm having a quick scan down the list in my and then I will move the pointer to the bottom right and click set to send the coordinates to the drone. Switching to onboard waypoint view and refresh shows me that those waypoints have been accepted by the drone and you'll notice the altitude for the different waypoints is different this time. It's not restricted to the three meters the drone prefers. So let's click play. And then give it a little bit of room. Possibly just a bit more room than that. This time we'll keep the waypoint view in the corner, and the drone is immediately set off towards waypoint zero. Don't worry about the red and white line from before, that's the previous flight. System MAV001 reached waypoint zero. The view in front is Shoreham Airport, which we can see a little more now we're above the trees. We're rising up to the 25 meter, or at least 25 meter according to the drone. System MAV001 reached waypoint one. Mercifully, there's very little wind, so we're getting quite a clear view. System MAV001 reached waypoint two. Link lost to system one. Just as the drone turns to face my old nemesis, the English Channel, we lose our link. That's what the red flashing box is in the corner of Q ground control. But it doesn't seem to be a problem. The descent was a planned part of the journey, 
and the drone still following its flight plan and still making turns. Link regain to system one after 30 seconds. Link, link regain to system one after three seconds. All we've lost are the white dots where the drone reports its position back to Q ground control. Link lost to system one. Keep your eye on the map in the bottom right. Link regains to system one after 19 seconds. The moment the drone is reacquired, it pops back into its new accurate position. Now I've just got to hope that I can get to the drone before that dog does. System M8, system one is now in stabilized mode and standing by. Link lost to system one. Looks like I'm going to make it. Next time I'll have to try somewhere more dangerous. <laughs>